Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Georgi Boyko, also known as Pandasauce, and today I'm going to talk about privacy. First of all, uh, who's interested in tracking you on the internet? As we all got to find out in the last year, uh, tracking you is a huge deal for the governments, but the governments are not the only ones tracking you. Private companies also do it, and who does it better is a good question. So, in case of governments, tracking you is mostly expenses because the data has to be intercepted, stored somewhere, analyzed, and that's quite pricey. Uh, if it's private companies, they actually generate revenue from your data and they get it directly from you. You'll be more than happy to provide them with it. Uh, so, how do we track you exactly? If we employ mass, there's only 7 billion people on this planet, and uh, that's 2 to the power of 33, uh, to get enough uh, unique identifiers to identify every living person. So how is this useful? Well, uh, we can use the reduction of entropy equation, which is minus logarithm base 2 of the probability that some fact would be true for a random person. For example, let's say I know your birthday, which is April 29, 2014. Uh, that's, uh, there's 365 days in a year, so that's 1 365th. And if we put that into the calculator, we'll find out that we have eight and a half bits of entropy already. So how do we find out more? Cookies. Cookies are like club cards. They allow to see. Uh, huh? <laughs> okay. They allow to use seemingly random data and tie it to a person, or in this case, your browser. Uh, so how do cookies work? Well, imagine it's spring now, and in the morning you're reading an article about gardening. And while you're reading the article, some news network, uh, some ads network is serving you ads. And if you've ever had to serve ads from an ads network, you know that it's usually a piece of JavaScript you put in the page, it phones back home, retrieves the ads, shows them to you. But what actually happens here is two important things are sent to the ads network. That's that holder of a cookie, 1337, that's one, uh, is interested in gardening, that's two. The ads network knows it now. Fast forward a few hours, and over lunch, you're reading a different article. And this time, the same ads network is serving you ads again. It already knows you're probably interested in gardening. So the ads this time are going to be about gardening tools. Hey, you might say, uh, so what? Because there's just some random number that's tied to me, and you may actually have wanted to buy the gardening tools. But the scary part is, Google is the biggest ads provider and a search engine. It's also a social network now. So how difficult would it be to tie that data to your social network profile? Probably not very difficult. Google also owns YouTube now, and YouTube keeps asking you to use your full name. Another thing. Uh, so take home. <laughs> <laughs> Doing all this, there is no need to wiretap you. Uh, it was all done more or less legally. Uh, it, it actually generates revenue. And uh, even though there is now the EU cookie law, uh, so what does the user do when he sees another nag screen saying that some evil corporation has enslaved him? Nothing. He clicks OK. Uh, even with that, there's still flash cookies and there's HTML5 local storage, which isn't very trivial to disable. You have to go to about config and it's not trivial. Uh, it doesn't end at cookies because your browser is a gold mine. With every HTTP request, uh, you're sending your browser information, operating system information, and I can retrieve a lot of stuff with JavaScript. I can find out uh, what plugins you have installed, what fonts are installed on your system, and there is a nice JS fiddle which allows me to find your local network IP, the one behind NAT. It works. Um, so how do you think all these services generate revenue? Uh, they generate revenue by selling your data. You are the product. That's how they generate revenue. When was the last time you clicked this button? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Probably not that long ago. But uh, why did you click it? Because you liked something. But OK, you don't have to click it if you like something. Because you click it, 10 minutes later, you forget that you've clicked it. But Facebook now knows a piece of important data about you and is going to be stored forever. So think about it next time. <laughs> uh, the next big thing is, there, it has been found out that uh, the way you move your mouse around the screen and click things, it correlates with your eye movement, with where your attention is. And companies are already catching up with it. Uh, they can generate heat maps like this uh, to see what you were interested in, what, uh, your, where your attention was. 
doesn't end there. Uh, the cherry on top of the cake is they want to be uh, aware of who clicked it, why he clicked it, where he came from, and where he went afterwards. And here, you could adjust some sliders and click on uh, the dots and find out more about the users. <laughs> this system was operational over five years ago. Yep. Uh, okay, let's move away from the private companies and go into something that the governments would probably do, more techy stuff. So what can I find out without getting into your browser? Uh, probably your IP address and a MAC address, and either is enough to come to your ISP, give them a subpoena, and find out who you are. But that's not uh, the end of it, because uh, there are open geolocation databases available, and uh, you can just go word driving and find out where uh, uh, certain uh, access points are, and can track you there. Have you ever encountered spyware? It often comes with free software, bundled and opted in by default. It can be tricky to remove uh, entirely, and uh, it doesn't get picked up by AVs because it does not necessarily do anything outright malicious. It's just sitting there collecting some data. Uh, not detection. Uh, in some cases, uh, it's possible to find out whether you're behind an ad just by looking at the TTL on the packet. Uh, and it also tells me what operating system you're using, because Linux and Windows, they have different default TTL values. Mobile devices. Uh, if you're mobile, things get even easier. Uh, you probably remember this. Uh, it was from iPhone uh, geolocation log scandal, and uh, as much as I don't understand why someone would want to keep their GPS on all day, this is a real thing. Uh, Snoopy. Snoopy is another awesome tool uh, at tracking things from your phone. You probably saw that for the Forcon. Uh, it listens to the air and uh, sees for your phones uh, looking for the networks you have previously connected to, then ties it uh, with geolocation data, and it's possible to find out where you have been in the last half a year or a year or so. Or there's a different approach. Uh, I could just put a pair of crock clips on your ethernet cable, put a Raspberry Pi or a wireless router there, and uh, come in at any time I like, connect to it, and listen in on your traffic. Uh, there are also some really good tools for man in the middle you, like Interceptor. Uh, why this one is special, uh, it's available for all operating systems. You can put it on iPhone, you can put it on Android, Linux, Windows. And uh, it also knows how to reconstruct files that were sent over the network and presents them to you in a nice way. It's not the only one of its kind either, because uh, there is also uh, DriftNet, which just reconstructs the images sent over the network. So you can just track images, and uh, there are other tools are available as well. Uh, so, what do I need to do now? I just need to set up an evil twin hotspot, uh, throw in Snoopy and Interceptor NG, and I'm controlling your internet uh, data. Countermeasures which are available? Well, not so many really. Uh, there's reliable end-to-end -end encryption, but it wouldn't be the panacea as Heartbleed has reminded us recently. Um, you can avoid browser tracking by disabling certain features in your browser, but that again has its own drawbacks because some pages will not be rendered properly, and you'll have to enable it. Or you may want to use something like Discuss for discussing articles, and it comes with a bunch of trackers attached to it. So there's not much choice. But uh, when you're going into the physical layer, uh, not the physical layer, but uh, techy stuff, <laughs> uh, you could, of course, use VPN and SOX uh, to hide who you are from the remote server you're connecting to. But uh, in case of global adversary scenario, it's very vulnerable to timing attacks. And because uh, all the VPN and SOX providers already have to install legal interception equipment uh, in their data centers, uh, it's not that difficult to imagine that actually working. Um, so have a go with social engineering your VPN provider, who brags about not keeping any logs, and see if they deny the existence of those logs right away. Say you're a bank employee or a police officer, but I will not be legal legally responsible for this if you do it for any consequences. So, disclaimer there. Uh, it also depends on your threat model. Uh, in case of global adversary scenario, uh, the political tensions and language barriers uh, can be actually exploitable, and they can be more useful than something else. Then there are things everyone has heard about. Uh, there's Tor, which does a really good job at uh, keeping your communication secret, but it's also vulnerable to timing attacks. There's I2P, and honestly, this is the simplest diagram I could find that explains I2P, and to explain it in all the details, it would take another talk, and there's a reason for that. These guys have done an amazing job at considering every possible scenario 
But even in their threat model document, they do say there's only this much you can do reasonably against a powerful global adversary. Uh, and uh, if you think uh, about what the history of internet has taught us, it is that the users, they will not be using something overly complicated. They will not sacrifice their convenience. They're, they will always pick the path of least resistance. And you can uh, see that by looking at how many people are using Tor, I2P, or no measures at all. You could always set up a darknet or a mesh net, but that would be very limited just to your local peers. So that doesn't work well. But let's go back to the real world and what you can do about browser tracking. There's, of course, no script, which is really good. Uh, it blacklists everything and operates uh, on uh, a whitelist basis. So you have to explicitly allow every website where you want to enable JavaScript. And it's really good because it also disables access to HTML5 local storage, among other things. Uh, there is Ghostery, uh, which is a slightly different, uh, works in a slightly different way. Here, uh, it operates on a blacklist. So there is a list of known trackers. So instead of blocking everything, it filters only known trackers. Uh, it also filters uh, cookie trackers. Uh, so it has some features that NoScript doesn't have. Uh, and Adblock Plus is great because uh, it has a really flexible system of rules and exceptions for blocking or allowing something. and it's really good. Now, what's our, what are our future perspectives here? Well, things do not seem to be getting any better because there's really huge money in breaching your privacy, and there's surprisingly little money in protecting your privacy. Uh, you may remember the OpenSSL team. Uh, I think there's only five people on the team, right? And they're asking for funding recently. But there's another uh, side to this coin because uh, on one hand, big companies could bring more money into protecting your privacy. On the other hand, that would give them more influence in protecting your privacy, and that's not a good thing. Um, so why do you care at all about uh, your privacy? Well, uh, you might care when uh, your prospective employer will be doing a background check you, on you, or if you apply for a job at a police office or something and you need government clearance. But a more realistic scenario is, there was a Reddit thread recently, uh, and this was a video of how to set up a router uh, by some local ISP. And as you can see there, someone stopped at the right frame and saw the recent documents. And you wouldn't want to do that. That might land you in trouble if you do this at, at work. Uh, but there's not just this. Uh, would you like your family members to find out what's your favorite dildo size? <laughs> uh, as a final note, I'd like to remind you that privacy is a binary quality. You cannot give up a little bit of your privacy. As, long, uh, as, far, uh, sorry. as soon as you've done that, you've given up your privacy. You've lost it. And keeping that in mind, is privacy still a thing? Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Do you think the EU should introduce a law banning what these companies are doing? Especially selling your information, your private information on for advertising for money. I don't think that would work well, but it might be worth doing. But you agree to it. You explicitly agree when you sign up. Yeah. <laughs> but most, don't people don't really un most people don't understand what they're, what they're agreeing to in that situation. <laughs> in this situation, it may be a case that you need a new white law saying, right, this shouldn't be allowed. You're not allowed to do this. But people aren't just not aware of it. Actually, how many people read the small print the terms of service before they sign up? Yeah, probably yeah. none. <laughs> <That's actually laughs> Uh, I, haven't, I haven't ever seen law fixing anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't get them to pay their taxes. <laughs> 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 that might be more complicated. Mm -hmm. The other question is how many users would go on a random Google and would say you have to pay for the search engine or for Gmail or for whatever they have. You would have to invite the privacy. Okay, so let's move on. Last.